Hey guys, I'm live from Denver at the Denver, Colorado Convention Center and this is the Mecom Auction. It's just started on Thursday today and it's going July 20th through the 22nd and with me is John and uh, John's been with Mecom for a very long time and uh, John, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi, everybody. I'm John Crane at Mecham Auctions. You might have seen me on the broadcast on NBC, NBCSN. Been doing that for 10 years. And I'd like to welcome everybody to Denver. We'll be here for three big days, about 800 cars. And uh, we're going to show you a couple of them, kind of give you a little behind the scenes on what's happening here live right now. Hey, John, and behind you is a very interesting truck because TFL Truck owns a 74 High Boy. Can we take a look at this F-250? Yeah, trucks have just emerged into be one of the most popular markets in the collector car world now. And a truck like this is what's really kind of set the stage. Um, it's a very nice, high quality driver, meaning it's not over restored. Not too nice to drive. Three quarter ton, that's what the F-250 designator is. It's a long wheelbase with that torquey and very reliable 390 cubic inch V8. Yeah, let's take a look because our truck is pretty beat up. You know, it's really rusty. And uh, and here's a question. A lot of people ask us, how do I know if I have a 360 or a 390? Do you have any pointers? Well, you know, the FE series engines from Ford, which is what both of those engines are based out of, uh, externally have the same dimensions and look the same. So if you're trying to identify what you have, you definitely need to get the guidebooks and know what the numbers are and do your investigation of the various casting numbers to try to decide not only um, what displacement the engine is, but you can also find out when the engine was built. If it's not original to that vehicle, at least it'll give you, give you an idea of what it may have come out of. Let's look a look at the interior, and this is once again a 390, 1973 Ford F-250. And look at the body. I mean, the body is in a really good shape, right? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would suggest to you guys. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's better to buy a vehicle that's already been done as opposed to trying to fix one up. Yes. Uh, but then a lot of people enjoy taking something that's rusty or beat up a little bit and bringing it up to this kind of standard. But you know, as we kind of paint this thing and we take a look at it, what I like about this truck is, is it's not so flawless. It's not so perfectly done that you wouldn't be afraid to take this truck out and enjoy it. And a lot of people, especially with these four-wheel drive trucks, they still want to get out and do some occasional light off-roading. You're not going to want to beat it up to death. It's way too nice for that. But as opposed to a lot of the show trucks, this one can be driven. And people just love seeing 50s, 60s, 70s pickup trucks out on the road. Can the we fastest take a growing market in the country car world right now. Can we take a look at inside? Look at the interior. It looks like the seat's been uh, reupholstered, but nice and clean and tidy inside. And how do people, I mean, people sign up for an auction as owners. How, in, how much in advance? How long does the process take? Well, we always recommend to get exposure on the market that you enter your car to meet them auction four months in advance. Uh, that's not convenient for everybody to do that, but uh, two to, one to two months in advance is usually enough time to get the vehicle into the auction, into a good spot, and let us use our promotion machine to get it promoted so that people know in advance uh, it's going to be here, and that draws more potential buyers and is going to drive the price up. So the auction started today, correct, on Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. The auction started about an hour ago. Uh, the first two vehicles were pickup trucks right out of the block. Both of those sold right off the bat. Pretty cool to see because that market is so strong right now. It'll go till about 6 o'clock today, and we reset everything, and we do it again tomorrow, uh, which is Friday and Saturday. Gates open here at 8 o'clock, first car at 10 o'clock, and a little surprise for your viewers, uh, we will be broadcasting the auction tomorrow and Saturday on Facebook Live, 11.30 until 5.30, both days, Facebook Live with our full television production. We're not going to be on NBCSN on this one, thanks to Tour de France, okay. seriously, okay. didn't have the airtime for us, but we are going to be doing it on Facebook Live, so check that out if you can't make it out here. Well, there are a lot of cars and trucks here. Can we look at some others? Like, for example, like this one, you were telling me, <laughs> look at the front of this. What we've got right here is, is we've got a Dodge pickup truck that was uh, formerly part of the Department of the Interior Park Service truck with a lot of rust that's been clear coated over the rust. And that is a, a kind word for that is patina. Yeah. And this is a very popular sort of subculture where people like the the originalness, even the fact that there's a lot of rust on that truck, and it's been clear coated to protect it. That would have been unheard of 10 years ago. Uh, we're not seeing a tremendous amount of vehicles being presented this way, but every once in a while we see them and I get a chuckle out of it. Okay, well how about we walk around and then find the star of the show? 
<laughs> and that's that's a secret that's coming up, right? Well, we do. We've got well, one. not a secret. It's been promoted, <laughs> right? We've got a lot of incredible variety, as you're going to see if you're just kind of taking a little uh, walk down the road with us. Um, pickup trucks, uh, Broncos. We've got an El Camino here. Yeah. More pickup trucks coming up. Uh, Pre-war classics. Um, Modern cars, we've got automotive history at this auction spanning 100 years. It's a really the best car show you can ever attend because you're going to see stuff that you're typically not going to see at your local cruise night. Um, and we've got cars here that are ranging $5,000 in value up to half a million dollars or more. We're going to take a look in a little bit of that half a million dollar car. Yeah, and actually I really love this because these cars are real. You know, some of them are daily drivers, right? And you have a variety of cars. It's amazing. Right, and you know, it only takes just a couple minutes to look around these cars and decide if the car is over-restored, which would mean that it's just simply too nice to drive, that would be intended for show use only. Because if you take one of those expensive cars, it's a show car, you start driving it, it will deteriorate. It just That's just the way it works. Uh, the bulk of the cars here at the Denver auction, though, are entry and mid-level collectible cars. Average price of a vehicle here, probably $30,000, $40,000. A lot of them less than that, some higher than that. But most of the vehicles are going to fall within that price range. Can we here. take a look at this original looking Bronco here? We yeah. had a 68 half cab at TFL truck for a while. Okay. And uh, this reminds me of that very much. Well, this is a 71 Bronco, and with the very desirable optional V8, the 302 with the yes. offset air cleaner. Yes. Because the hood is so low. And uh, this is a market that has just exploded over the past five or six years. Viewers of our television show will recall us talking about that and documenting just the explosion of popularity of these. You notice a three-speed manual transmission shifted on the column, yeah. and what looks like the automatic shift on the floor is not. That's to shift the transfer case out yeah. of two and four-wheel drive high and low. People are commenting there. They're noticing a lot of odd vehicles, like, for example, this bus, <laughs> yeah. which is a pickup truck, actually. Right, yeah. VWs, again, have just, there's some charm to it. This is a 61 VW, single cab pickup with the truck bed. And of course, they made these in a, almost an unlimited number of uh, body styles. And this was really intended for somebody uh, that was either a handyman or a construction worker back in the early 60s would buy one of these. Uh, not a lot of power, but tremendous gas mileage. Today, nobody's using them for work anymore. It's just kind of a real charming counterculture vehicle. The Triumph. And let's just keep walking and see what we notice. I mean, there's everything from lifted trucks to classics to... Brand new vehicles, I mean newer vehicles, right? Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, late model uh, European exotics, Ferrari, Lamborghini, uh, we've got a Dodge uh, Hellcat here, those came out in 2015. Yeah. And we've also got uh, a couple of uh, Ford Model A's from the mid, uh, mid-20s. mid Look at this, a Lexus SC. Well, it's actually Japanese or, market only, check oh, it out. Japanese market only right-hand right drive, Soar, drive, Toyota Soar, which is which is the Lexus. Uh, they, did, they didn't make this, they didn't sell this car in Japan as a Lexus, they sold it as a Soar. Yeah, look and at this. The, yeah, there's the unique logo to it. Sorry, that got me by surprise. No, I know, don't feel bad. So, <laughs> I mean, it is, it's a Lexus, heart and soul, it just isn't bad as one from the factory. And can you give me kind of an idea of approximate values on a, like a Thursday? You know, what kind of values do people see here? Right, what's happening today right now, you can might be able to hear the auction in the background, is we start the first day of the auction, which is today of this three-day auction, with cars that are going to be priced probably $20,000, $25,000 and under. Friday, tomorrow, it's definitely going to kick up a notch. The cars are going to go up ten dollars or $15,000. And then on Saturday, our most expensive, our most valuable cars will hit the block, and we'll have a lot of cars in the fifty dollars to $100,000 range, and even a handful of cars well north of $100,000. People want to see that uh, little FJ. Yeah, the Toyota Land Cruisers are yeah. another one of those vehicles that just has, they're so basic, they're so raw, they're so reliable and dependable, yeah. and they have so much charm. Once again, here's a vehicle that's just gone crazy in the collector car world. Take a look at this, this is beautifully restored. For years, these, uh, Land Cruisers, very much like the Broncos, like the Broncos we've looked at here, um, were used heavily off-road, they were used and abused. Now, thanks to the aftermarket and the interest in these vehicles, there are parts available. And there's even, even on these Land Cruisers, there's even things that you can do to upgrade steering systems, suspension hey, systems. Both, there's both. small block Chevy engine swaps that are literally bolt-in that are available with kits on these. 
Corvette's a huge part of what we do at Meekham Auctions, about 10% yeah. of our inventory, typically over the course of a year is Corvettes. Here's a late model Aston Martin. You talk about variety. Yes. How about a Mercury Monterey convertible with the top down? I mean, My gosh. You just never, you just literally never know out of the, the 800 or so cars that are in this building, no two cars are identical or even close to being the no, same. No, 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 no. This is amazing. I see you have a Humvee back in the, in the, in the yeah, back. and military, military Humvee and civilian Hummers here as well. Yes. And um, let's just walk over. You have like a medium duty pickup truck with exhaust stacks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just quickly take a look at that. Yeah, and maybe we right can behind, look... park right behind a custom Corvette. I yes. Mean, it's just the, the variety of cars so, is just staggering. Hey, you can get this uh, medium duty truck, put a trailer on it, get a couple of cars, hey, and you're done, right? Yes, you, you, you got the plan. There's a top kick. <laughs> yeah. Let me let's turn around so you can see it. GMC, I mean, look at this variety. This is just, it's kind yeah, of that's a, a... That's a pretty serious truck there. Yes. Diesel power, GMC top kit. IROC Z. Yeah, you know, these cars from the 1980s, the Camaros and the Firebirds and the Mustangs, Fox Body Mustangs, 1980s, poised to really start to kind of get going because it's a whole new generation of car enthusiasts that grew up lusting over these cars. There's a Fox Body Mustang there. These would have been the, you know, the competitors, the yeah, Camaro yeah, and, the, and the Mustang were the, were the sales battles. And to see these cars in really good condition, like both that Camaro we saw and this Mustang GT right here, these cars, most of them very heavily modified. A lot of, a lot of aftermarket parts of the. I remember this well. car when it came out. I was in high school. Yeah, I mean, right on. That's so. Yeah, I remember this very well. Original fabric interior with the plaid upholstery. I mean, that was the fa that was the fashion back then. This Mustang, of course, with the five liter fuel injected HO engine. 50HO. 1987 with a five speed manual transmission. Big emerging market right there on that car. A lot of the other markets of the 60s and 70s cars are already well established. The cars of the 1980s are the next ones that are going to have their day in the day in the sun. So here's what I would like to do, John. Let's go look at the star, okay. and then let's walk towards the block because I want to get some action and actually see the loudness, how loud it is over there. The Sox has started at one o'clock today to a literal packed house, which is not typical on a uh, Thursday afternoon start date. What we have found now that we're in our third year here in Denver is a tremendous amount of interest overall in a variety of collector cars. Uh -huh. uh, the clubs, the cruise nights, the events, the car shows, uh, Mile High Nationals going on right now as yes. we speak yes. uh, here in town as well. So a car crazy area and we're really gratified that the Denver market has really supported what Meekham Auctions is all about. And here, here it is. All right, so give me a little well, the scoop well, you on know, this. Well, at first glance, it looks like sort of your plain vanilla 1969 Camaro, but it's far from that. This is one of 69 CL1 Camaros that were built as part of the Coco program in 1969. The holy grail of muscle cars from the 1960s. All aluminum, right from the factory, okay. 427. Aluminum heads, aluminum intake manifold, aluminum block, one year only. This one's a four-speed. It still has its original engine in it. Very rare and unusual, desirable, and in arguably the best Camaro color for 1969, Hugger Orange. Look at all the aluminum, natural aluminum. Nothing's yes. painted under that hood on that engine compartment. Expected effects, you ready for this? North of $500,000. So if you are looking forward to this car, it's Saturday, right? Saturday. Yes, this this car will be Saturday afternoon. You got a couple of ways to watch it. You can always go to Meekham.com and watch the webcast, no commentary, streaming webcast at Meekham.com, or tune into Facebook Live on Saturday between 11 at 30 and 5:30. And uh, Scott Hope, my host, and me as commentator analyst, and uh, Katie Osborne as our social media rep, are going to be calling all the action for six hours on Friday, six hours on Saturday, starting at 11:30. Okay. That would be mountain time, local Denver time. Yeah.
Well, let's get to the block a little bit more, and while we're walking, let's look at some other cars. Well, what we're doing now, we're walking right down the center aisle. This is regarded as the best cars of the entire auction. And if you've been watching the past 10 minutes or so, you saw a lot of really nice cars, but yes. it's being kicked up a couple of notches big time. Yes, yeah, so Heavy I see. Heavy duty, 55 Chevy Resto mod right here. Yes. With a modern contemporary fuel-injected LS series engine, a very popular swap. Right next to it? Late model Rolls Royce. Okay. See, right, you never know what you're going to end up with here. Classic. One of the earliest collector cars of all time. One of the earliest cars that were recognized as something very special. 1957 Chevy Bel Air hardtop with a 283 cubic inch small block power plant. 1955 Chevrolet convertible, a Bel Air top of the line. Oops, excuse us, sorry. Sorry about that. No shortage of pre-war classics, Ford from 1940. Not hot rodded, restored back to its original configuration. First year uh, generation three Corvette from 1968. Look at this, a nice uh, 911. Yeah, Porsches are another one of the markets that's really started to come alive. 911 been around since the mid 1960s and is iconic to their enthusiasts as the Corvette is to the Corvette enthusiasts. Yeah. Great competitors for many years. Look at that Bel Air with those uh, drag set up with those slick tires. Oh no, like just big tough tires, right? That, yeah, that and that's called Pro Street. And that car's not intended to go around corners fast like the modern Pro Tour Resto mods. That car's made to go like a bullet in a straight line, and those big tires help the powerful engine get hooked up. Great. Mustangs and Corvettes, an unlimited supply of those at all Mecham auctions. Of course, a TTS or Audi. Yeah, late model. Sure. Fairly late model uh, car. We do not discriminate at Mecham auctions. We, we allow uh, any car into our auctions, as you can see. Trucks, motorcycles. Another Bronco. I really love, and especially with the uncut fender in the back. Right? You like that, yeah. You like that profile. There's yeah. a lot of, lot of, a lot of discussion and some controversy about that either way. Yes, uh, I'm with you. I like the being a kid of the '60s, growing up in that era. Yeah. That's how I remember Broncos look. Not raised up like that. That was a little bit more yes, of a yes. right All right, well, let's go here. Well, thank you for spending the time with us today and kind of walking us around because this is amazing. This is like, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Well, we're kind of heading towards the uh, ground zero of the Newcomb auction as we're walking past a lot of the inventory. The cars we're looking at now in the background are cars we're going to see on Saturday. We have a packed house standing room only and starting to get into a very noisy environment yes. with the uh, auctioneer chant, as it's referred to. Well, look yeah, at we'll this. run non-stop today, starting this at 1 till about 6 o'clock. Coco Camaro. This is interesting. This is late model. Is this 16 or 15? Yeah, this is a 2000. This is a 2016 Coco Camaro. Now, remember, we looked at the 1969 Coco Camaro, right. of which 69 were built. Yes. Chevrolet built 69, paying homage back to the 69, the original Coco uh, 427 car, paying homage with this non-street legal factory race car. You know, I wasn't, bars on I wasn't Vegas at the SEMA show when they unveiled it. That was really special. And what's really funny is a lot of these cars are drag race. Still, you know, currently it's a very it's a very competitive uh, drag race car. But a lot of people bought them as collector cars, hoping to kind of cash in long term. That remains to be seen. Look at this Restomod. Is that yeah, the 55, 55 Nomad Restomod, very heavily modified. It's extreme workmanship. Okay, well, let's, we're going to wrap up here, but I just kind of wanted to show the atmosphere. Absolutely. Coming in uh, right into show center. See the seats and the big crowd. Really starting to get it noisy and exciting for now. We run about 30 to 35 cars an hour, so basically the car spends about two minutes on the block. We have to run that rapid of a pace because of the extreme high amount of consignments that we get. 13 is it in. 14,000 13, some of these people that are here are bidders, and some people are just here for spectators. It's only $30 to come in and buy a ticket. The kids love it under free, and the gates open every day at 8 a.m.
14, Logan. I like to call Reserve. it Marshall Wells. 13, 14, 5, 13, 3, 3. 3. going to be 15 pounds and dollars. Right, Marshall's all around. 13 pounds and 14 pounds and dollars, what it is. 13, 14. Thank you so much for being with us, and guys, if you want to see some interesting cars, get over to the convention center in Denver. Yeah, we'll be here, we'll be here uh, to about 6 o'clock today, and then on Friday and Saturday, 8 a.m. till about 6 or 7 o'clock every day as well. That's right. Fifteen pounds and dollars. So fifteen pounds of flavor. T fifty fours and eighty eight nine four.